All right, folks, so I have ordered a RV water pump here. At supposedly five and a half gallons a minute. At 55 PSI, uh, has its own integrated pressure switch, so we don't have to worry about that. And because I need something, because we've, uh, you know, we've made the portable water, but now we need to be able to, to move the water, uh, particularly if I plan on using a pressure washer, things like that. Just be a little more convenient. So I bought one of these little guys. And I put it together, and then I also purchased some of these uh, to go from the pipe thread to a garden hose. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know what they call it. Just, uh, yeah, just a garden hose adapter from uh, whatever that was, a half inch pipe there to garden hose. So I got a couple of them bad boys. I just threaded them on there by hand. We'll use our pliers backwards here. Get some folks triggered. Now they just go on plastic, so I think we have to be a little civilized about it here. I just wanted to snug them up just a little bit. As long as they don't leak, we're okay. So there's that. And then I got a couple clamps I'm going to put on the end of this. I got these bad boys here. All right. I was going to say, I think you can, you, you can usually put these on both sides. So we'll stick them on. Uh, I don't really want to mount the pump permanent like to the barrel or anything because it's a lot easier to just bring this inside to keep it from freezing than it is, you know, an entire barrel. So that's my thoughts on that. Stick that over there. Stick that over here. Now we may end up having to mount it to like a board or something. I don't know how much it's gonna, you know, torque when it kicks on, when it's if it's kicking on and off, or how much it vibrates or anything like that. I did almost no research before I purchased it. Cause I'm a man. That's what we do. So we'll stick these on here. This is gonna get people's goats. Watch this. gonna crimp that down crudely so I'm just crimping the inner part here onto the bare wire just got them both bent over see if we can't give them a little bit of a squeeze here and then ideally this outer piece here the outer crimp would usually hold on to your insulation which we can hopefully make that happen. Wire gauge is a little bit small for these clamps, but I wanted to make sure I could get them over a battery terminal pretty easily. There we go. And then we'll do the same thing on the black one. Might put a little dab of solder in there just so they don't pull out on us. I mean, they shouldn't, but. So that's that. Technically, uh, we should have uh, we should have a fuse in here. It does say states here uh, thermal overload protection, so it has some sort of thermal overload protection. But uh, I don't know if it has any uh, short circuit protection. I'm kind of doubting that. Uh, I elected to just crimp them. I just crimped them and left them. It'll be good enough for our purpose. Uh, we don't need to get everybody's goat today by breaking out some solder and tools, huh? And then I bought a uh, little short jump post that's female on both ends, huh? Hey, <laughs> and uh, this is the inlet. I think it has washers in it, it does. We'll screw that on here, and we should be able to screw the other half on our drum, or the other end, rather, on the drum down at the spigot. And then hopefully we can just set the battery and stuff up here, this thing doesn't vibrate too much. And then out of this side here, we just hook our garden hose and bada bing, bada boom. I don't want to ruin my jump hose, but yeah, no, that's it. Yep, no. So these spigots are garbage. Uh, we're gonna have to do something else there. So well, that kind of sucks. You can't uh, can't tighten it down. There is an O-ring in here. That's interesting. Like I say, it threads on fine. You just can't go far enough to uh, you know to make the seal. Well. Well, that sucks. Should have went to my local hardware store. People mentioned in the last video that these drums are thick enough that you can just drill it and um, just get a regular pipe thread spigot and just thread them in there and they, they seal good enough for like the purpose that we're gonna use it for. So, 
Well, pisser. We're cooking with fire now, boys. The uh, adapters I bought came with a bunch of them rubber washers, so I took that O-ring out and put in two rubber washers, because what's better than one rubber washer? Two rubber washers. And then it snugged up just fine down there, so it might work good. Um, we got the Flexzilla, uh, not a sponsor, of course, but the hose, the Flexzilla hose was cheaper than the no-name brand stuff. I don't know why. I don't particularly like Flexzilla hoses in the shop. The air hoses, they're probably the worst hoses you can buy. Uh, they're great when there's no air in them. You put air in them and they're from Flexzilla to like, they go into Cobra mode. Flying around, they're terrible. You can't hang them up. They got so much memory or they get all kinked up that they're, they're awful to use uh, for air, in my opinion. Let's uh, get some water in this and then we'll hook up the other hose and we'll see if this thing works. There. In there, we wait. Have this baby on the charger, set to nuclear. Still warm. Hey, we'll hook up positive last because it freaks people out. Oh, she's primed. Let her get some good water up here. I see you go through the fill. That thing's pretty quiet. Oh, look at that. This is fun. Here, we'll spray it back in this one. Wow, that works better than I expected. Let me show you. Ready? Shuts off and it's 55 PSI. Yeah, that's great. Get the air out of it there, so it'll probably shut off as quick as you purge all the air out of the hose. But yeah, I think it doesn't really vibrate that much. It's quite quiet too. So yeah, we can just leave that laying in like the truck bed or something. Let's spray it on the side, see how far it sprays. Ready? Oh yeah. That's yeah, so it works pretty good. I don't know how far it is to the sidewalk, I don't know, 50 feet maybe. So it seems to seems spray pretty good uh, when you want high volume. It's not, it's not as, uh, as powerful, but anyway, it's going to work perfect for what we do, uh, especially if we're just trying to feed, uh, you know, a pressure washer or something. Uh, this is going to be great. We're going to have a good time. So that's it. So now we have a portable uh, water source. It says that this is uh, supposedly 7.5 to 15 amps. I guess we can measure how much current it has. I don't know. See, this doesn't battery doesn't have an amp hour rating on it. But uh, you know, we can figure out how long we can use a 12 volt battery for. Which I suppose, you yeah, know, I guess we can look up the rating on it maybe. But yeah, we can see what the, kind of curious to see what the running current of that thing is. Because I was kind of surprised to see that it had a you know seven and a half to 15 amps. So let's check it real quick. All right, battery's about dead in it here. Let's see, we'll let make that go. Well, we're not really super concerned with how zeroed out it is. Let's see. There we go. Okay, you ready? Let's see what its running current is. I got our full beans right there. Wow, so it is pulling, whoops. Make sure we're good here. Okay, ready? So that's a that's a high volume. So 8.6 amps, and that's probably going to go up at, until it hit trips the pressure switch. Yeah, I guess I guess we could reset our min max values on there just to see. Okay, you ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh, I probably make I'm probably cavitating the pump there. 
we'll say six and a half, six and three quarter. And then on the high side, it measured 9.67, so. Probably if we just barely spray it. So that's good. I would say it's an average. It's probably pretty correct what it says here, seven and a half, 15 amps max. And it probably depends on how much water it has to lift and stuff like that. That would be my guess. And of course, with our battery going dead in this, it's not highly accurate, but good enough. So yeah, that's our uh, little portable water setup. And then we'll just keep that thing charged. And I think this will work just dandy. So there's that baby. And of course, there's the stuff we got to, to do it. Just, uh, you don't need the Flexzilla, it's just ordinary garden hose and then that's that pump which seems to work pretty well I'm happily uh, pleasantly surprised with that actually and then uh, like I say just putting a couple of clamps on it and then a uh, battery that we have here so that's it nothing more to really show folks so I'm hoping this works to uh, uh, fit our needs that we have and like I say one of those needs was the ability to run a pressure washer away from you know, a, a local water source, I guess, or a pressurized water source or a domestic water source, a hose, you know, a house or whatever. And I wasn't sure if just gravity feeding the pressure washer, because that consumes 3.3 .3 gallons or three and a half gallons a minute itself. I don't know if gravity feeding it was gonna be enough. So I thought we were gonna need a pump. I probably could have tested that theory. Regardless, we do need to be able to pump it a little ways for some other stuff that I want to use it for. So anyhow, I'm not trying to make an excuse why I bought something. It just, that's just kind of my thoughts. So that's my theory. Anyhow, let me hear your theories guys. Thanks for watching.